Now, my name is BJ. I'm a, I'm a sophomore at BHS, part of, of the my browser keeper program, and learning local government and civic engagement by interviewing community leaders. Uh, can, you, can you like introduce yourself a little bit? Uh, hi, folks. I'm my name is Jim Kondos. Um, I've lived in Vermont pretty much all my life. Uh, I, I went to I was in the Burlington school system from kindergarten through my sophomore year. I was out at Burlington High School at, in, in my middle of my sophomore year when my parents moved to South Burlington and I graduated from South Burlington. Then I graduated from the University of Vermont. I've worked my whole life in, in Vermont. Uh, and I, my background is that I served 18 years on the South Burlington City Council. Uh, the last eight years, I was the uh, city council chair, uh, which is kind of like the mayor in South Burlington. And then I served in the state Senate. I chaired the education committee and government operations committee. And then I uh, have been secretary of state since 2011. So I'm now just started my sixth term or at the end of this term, I'll have 12 years as a secretary of state. Um, I've been the president of my national organization, uh, National Association of Secretaries of State. And I'm currently the national co-chair for the overseas and military voting uh, initiative uh, where we uh, try to find better ways and easier ways for people who are overseas, whether they're in the military or citizens, U.S. citizens, uh, to work uh, over there uh, and to be able to vote here in the United States. So we've been working very, diff uh, very um, focused on the work that we do. We believe in, in essentially one thing. Every, every eligible Vermonter has a right to vote, and we will protect that uh, going forward. So I think that's my background. I'm not sure if what else you want me to answer, but uh, I got I can answer lots of other questions. I see the questions in the chat uh, that Megan has posted. Um, you know, the, the, you want me to just go down the list? I think oh, just, let, them ask, let them ask you the questions. It's okay. Uh -huh, yeah, Jeremy, introduce yourself. Uh, hi, I am Jermir. I am also a student at BHA. So I'm currently in 11th grade. And uh, yes, I'm part of this program. Well, that's great. Uh, our first question is, what is the job of the Secretary of the State? So the Secretary of State in Vermont, every state has a sec not every state has a Secretary of State, but most do. Uh, some states have gotten rid of the Secretary of State and the Lieutenant Governor actually performs those duties as well. But he, and they're all different. Like there are three states, Maine, New, uh, Maine, Michigan, and Illinois, where the Secretary of State also oversees the Department of Motor Vehicles. We don't do that here. Here in Vermont, um, my role is I, I oversee the Office of Professional Regulation. So we have 50 professions that we uh, license uh, and regulate. And, and um, uh, we have an investigative unit to make sure it's about public protection, not about protecting the, the, the uh, professions. It's about protecting the public. Uh, and it's from things like real estate, accounting, uh, tattooists, uh, nursing, uh, osteopaths, uh, naturopaths, uh, pretty much all the medical professions, engineers. Uh, so there's a lot of professions. We have 50 professions, about 80,000 licensees that we oversee. I also have the state archives, which is where Vermont's most precious documents, like for instance, our the Vermont Constitution are kept, but we also have a record center. We work with all state agencies to maintain a 100,000 cubic foot record center where we uh, maintain their records for them until uh, they reach a certain retention. Um, corporations, the corporations division is where any business that's in the state of Vermont that wants to operate has to register with our office. Uh, it's the first place they go after us, they go to the tax department and then they go to the labor department for additional uh, licensing that they have to do. But uh, we, we are the first place and we help, we like to say that we help facilitate business in the state. Uh, and the last and probably best known is elections. We oversee the elections division. 
Uh, and we have uh, the smallest elections team in the country with only five people. Uh, but we work very closely with Vermont's 246 town clerks um, to maintain the integrity of our elections process and ensure that everybody who's eligible to vote can vote. Uh, so that's pretty much what we do as far as the Secretary of State's office. Oh, and how do you come in this job? Uh, I came into this, it's kind of a long story. Uh, I, you know, I, like I said, I served on the city council. Um, I was heavily involved in, with Governor Dean in, in um, uh, promoting uh, affordable housing in South Burlington. Uh, and uh, he actually recruited me. He asked me to run for state senate back in 2000. Um, and then uh, Peter Shumlin, who was a later governor, also uh, called me and wanted me to run. I did. I won. And I served in the state Senate. Uh, and one of the committees that I chaired was uh, the Government Operations Committee, which actually wrote most of the laws and had jurisdiction over the Secretary of State's office. So I was well, uh, well versed in what the Secretary of State's office did since I helped write many of the laws that they operated with. And um, uh, it, after the 2008 Obama election, uh, Secretary Markowitz, she was the Secretary of State before me, said uh, we happened to meet on a on an airplane. We we're flying, both flying the same place. And she said that uh, she was not going to run for re-election again. So she thought I should probably run. I did, and I'm here. Do you have any questions? No, he said uh, we have the smallest. Uh, amount of people that work in the voting system. How, how is that like different? Well, we set the policy. That's a great question. We set the policies and um, working with the legislature and make sure that the laws that we have work for Vermont. And right. what we do is uh, actually work with uh, the 246 town clerks from cities as big as Burlington to you know, we have like the, the town of Victory has 72 uh, people on their voter checklist. So it, it, it's a very wide range of, of voters, uh, but we manage all of the processes to make sure that they're following the right processes. But I, I can honestly say that all, sect the, all the town clerks, the city and town clerks around the state are really interested in one thing, and that is protecting the integrity of our elections. Another question is, how is town meeting this different because of the pandemic? Well, we recognized early on that it was going to be different. Obviously, last year, when the pandemic first hit us, uh, we set in place working with the legislature. Uh, they allowed me to have some flexibility and changing some of the laws that we had to help protect voters. Uh, and so we set we set some ground rules, if you want to call them, for the towns back in March of last year. The um, I think we all thought that the pandemic would be by, we wouldn't have to deal with it after November. Uh, and obviously it, it reared its ugly head again and uh, uh, we had to do something. So right after the November election, we began working with the governor's office, with uh, the town clerks, with uh, the Vermont League of Cities and Towns um, and legislative leaders to come up with a, if you want to call it a menu of options that towns could use for this year. Remember, we have three overriding principles that we uh, use when we were making any decision. One is to protect voting rights of every eligible Vermonter. Two, to protect the health and safety of every Vermonter uh, not just the voters, but also the town clerks and their and the workers at the polls, uh, and three to protect the integrity of our election. So it, it was a it was a constant um, tug of war in essence to make sure that we could make sure that we were following those principles uh, to ensure the integrity of our elections, but while protecting people. Um, and for instance, this year. Uh, we allowed some towns who have what they call a town meeting where they actually vote from the floor 
Uh, we allowed them to change to a ballot so that they could vote by ballot instead. Um, we allowed some town, well, we allowed any town that wanted to, to be able to mail their ballots directly to their voters, like we did in November. Uh, and, um, you know, Burlington is one of those towns that uh, has taken advantage of that, as well as South Burlington. Um, and we also allowed towns to be able to, to postpone their town meeting day from March 2nd to say sometime in April or May, when they might be able to have, when the, the pandemic might be uh, getting into a better place, uh, or they can move it outdoors. So, you know, we just, what we did was provide a lot of options. Oh, and my last question is, what is or can the Secretary of State's office doing to address racial in local political like governments and stuff? Well, it's, it, and that's a great question, Olivier, because we, we, uh, my office believes, and I believe strongly, I, I'm second generation American. My grandparents all came here from the, from overseas. Uh, and I strongly believe that um, not only is immigration good for the, for the United States, but it's something we should protect and we should help those people become citizens of the US. And that means they should be able to vote. Uh, so we, uh, everything we do is around making sure that everybody who is eligible to be a registered voter can be a registered voter. Uh, and, and so th there's two pieces of this. One is being able to be registered to vote. The other is being able to vote. And uh, so we we are constantly focused on how we can provide those opportunities to to satisfy that. And one of the things we did uh, two years ago, uh, and it's a pilot project right now that we did in Burlington and Winooski, uh, was we worked with the refugee community uh, and the New American community to decide, even though Vermont does not meet any threshold, federal threshold, for requiring ballots to be translated, we, we worked with uh, the, the, the new American communities to uh, uh, figure out which, which languages we should uh, use to, to promote. Uh, and, and we came up with six. Uh, and I, you know, I, they're on my website, so I, I, I don't have them in front of me, but uh, I know there's Somali, uh, Burm, Burmese, uh, I forget the other ones now, but there, there's seven, six languages, and we created videos in each of the language on, on the process of voting, but we also created um, uh, translated ballots so that when people show up, and they would request it. They can they can get a translated ballot that they they can use to help them vote in their election. So we hope to expand that to other places uh, as as needed. Uh, uh, and as I said, it's it's not something that we are required to do, but it's something we wanted to do because we thought it was important. Uh, Jeremy, I have another question. Um. So since we were, big, we were talking about voting, I was kind of curious because like not a lot of people know why voting is important. Would you like mind explaining to us what makes voting so important? Well, voting is, is that's a great, that's a, that is the question, I think, because that, that really is, a, is the very basis of our democracy. Everything starts with the citizen's right to vote. And you, you pick the people who will represent you, whether it's on a city council uh, or a select board in the smaller towns, uh, in the state legislature, in the statewide offices like the governor, the secretary of state, lieutenant governor, or, you know, for our congressional uh, uh, representatives. So you, your voice, your vote is your voice. That's how you promote what you what you believe the people you you support the people that you believe uh, will be the best for uh, you and for the for the state um, and so that's that's where it all starts and and that's why it is so important uh, and and you will often see me doing uh, videos and stuff uh, with regards to uh, transparency in government protecting the right to vote Um 
working on a national level uh, to ensure that uh, as well. All right. Awesome. Yeah, all right. Thank you so much for being with us today. Do you have any questions for us? Uh, no, I just think it's great that you're involved. Uh, you know, I, I, I hope as soon as you're eligible to be registered to vote, you get out there and register. Uh, you can do it online. You can do it in person. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's just, it is the fundamental principle of our democracy is to be able to be registered to vote and to actually vote. Um, and uh, I encourage you uh, to to do that as soon as you can. Get engaged. Do the do the things that you need to do in your community. Uh, th that will really help, I think, in the long run. Thank you. Thank you very much, and thanks, Megan.